pero simple uh, vision at the end of worship. It was actually a distressing vision. But it's where we're at right now. And uh, I saw this uh, huge bridge, big valley. And the bridge was beginning to, you know how they lift up, you know, to let boats through? But there was no, I didn't see no water there. It was just huge, like a, I don't know, huge gully. And this bridge was very big. And it, as it began to lift, I saw people running and trying to get on it because it was lifting higher and higher. It was moving slow. Some people had made it and some people, some people grabbed the end of it and fell off and fell in the the cliff in the valley and there were people that were left on the other side they didn't make the crossover and this is what's happening right now you know there are many people exiting the body of Christ but there are many people entering the body of Christ there's more entering than there are exiting and in this, that bridge that is lifting up, many are people realizing that if I don't catch this now, I'm not going to make it across. And we are in such a transition right now, and, and one of the things God is doing, he's making everything new. There's going to be everything new. And I want to talk about new things today, new things. And, and, and in this, there is a preparation that he has for me and you and the anointing. Because the Lord has been telling me about this new anointing he's going to be sending out. It's an increase in anointing. It's more of a boldness. It's more, more things that are going to be happening. You know, so many people that think just signs and wonders as a part of the anointing. Well, some of, you know, and then don't get me wrong, that's not, that's some of it. But the main thing is the power of Christ Jesus. It is the power of Christ Jesus. First of all, the power in you to overcome. The boldness in you to speak the truth with no fear. Where you are totally in a place of dead to yourself. And your focus is about the Father's business, just like Jesus. When he was a child, and his family was looking for him. I think it was around 12 or something. And they couldn't find him. And... Then they found him a few days later. And there he was preaching in the synagogue. And they were blown away because he was a kid preaching to <laughs> all of these people. And his mother came and got him and said, what are you doing? So she, he said, I was about my father's business because that is the priority of the anointing. It's being about the father's business. See, when people begin to compromise the father's business, they begin to lose the anointing. It begins to drift from them. In fact, David cried out, even when he sinned, take not your Holy Spirit from me. Don't remove your presence from me. He knew without the presence, the eternal presence, power and truth of God Almighty, he couldn't make it. And many people have compromised that. Many people have never reached it and never have the reality of it. They've been bound by the letter and by the world and not by the Spirit. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, in verse 16. It says, therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Hello. Even though we have known G Christ Jesus according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. In other words, we want to begin to focus on something beyond the natural. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, again, Christ is a representation of the anointed one. He is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become what? New. Now, all things are of God who has 
reconciled us to himself. So you kind of grab hold of this. So in the anointing, you are reconciled to Christ. You are closer. And has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. So that's what the message is. It's be reconciled to the Lord and get baptized in the Holy Spirit so the anointing is upon you. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God were pleading through us, God pleading through us. Think about this. God pleading through you. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Get close. For he made himself who knew no sin to become sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him in this world. New things about to be released and the greater anointing of the latter rain and the second mantle. It's all leading up to these two coming together. There's the latter rain and the second mantle. And it's not going to be given to everyone. Many will miss it. It's only going to be released to those who are separated, sanctified, and seekers of his presence. They are separated, sanctified, and seekers of his presence. They are doers of his word and promoters of his will. And they are haters of rebellion and evil. You hate rebellion and you hate evil. I'll repeat it. The latter rain and the second mantle will be released to those who are separated and sanctified to the Lord. They are seekers of his presence. They're doers of his word. They're promoters of his will. And they are haters of rebellion and evil because they know Rebellion. See, so many people don't look at rebellion as being evil, but it is. Rebellion is evil. That's how Lucifer got thrown out of God's presence. By being what? Rebellious. New things are about to be released. We're going to see many things turn. But in this new arena and, and new season that we're entering, with things being new, there's going to be a greater anointing. There's going to be a greater thing. I, I, I can't express to you enough the reality of that for myself. I know that I know that I know. And I happened to go on the Internet this morning. And there was my spiritual father who was talking about God's about to release a greater anointing. That was Benny Hinn. And he began to talk about it. I was like, whoa! This is awesome. Man. First Kings chapter 19. Now, there are things that will prepare us for this, and there are things that will cause us to miss. In verse 19, <clears throat> hallelujah. Now, Elijah was told by the Lord, he was given a message, and he departed from Elijah. Uh, he departed from there, and he found Elijah, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen before him, and he was with the twelve. Now, one yoke is two oxen. 
So in other words, he had 12 yokes. That's 24 oxen. Amen? That meant he was very wealthy. His family was very wealthy. He was being about his father's business. <laughs> but that was about to change. Then Elijah passed by him and threw his mantle on him. <laughs> the sign, of, uh, the anointing is significant with the mantle. It's an outer garment, a cloak. It's a sign of authority or uh, importance, a uh, high important person. So he threw it on Elijah. And he left and, and he left the oxen and ran after Elijah, and he said to him, Please let me kiss my father and mother, and then I will follow you. And he said to him, Go back again, for what have I done to you? When Elijah said that to Elisha, I believe that something happened to him. I believe that the anointing pierced his heart. He didn't say another word because he said, I'm going to show you now. So Elijah turned back from him and took a yoke of oxen. So he took two of them. And he slaughtered them and boiled their flesh using the oxen's equipment and gave it to the people. And they ate. And then he arose and he followed Elijah and became his servant. So he became a servant to the anointing. But there's something important about the yoke because there's the yoke of bondage. See, when, when the mantle came on him, when the anointing came on him, two things were broken immediately. I'm going to share this. Two things were broken immediately. And the first thing that was broken immediately was his connection with the world. And the second thing that was broken was his will. The connection with the world and his will. It was broke. See, that's what the anointing does. It, 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 it breaks you disconnects you from the world and disconnects you from your world, your will. So that your only desire is to be about the Father's business and His will. Immediately, uh, again, He took the a yoke to oxen, signifying the anointing that breaks the yoke. Amen? Breaks the yoke of the world's traditions, bondage is lost. How about bad habits? People have bad habits and don't think that it's sin. You know, people have bad eating habits. People have bad habits, things that they've carried on from tradition because they're not allowing the anointing to break that yoke. They're not realizing this thing. In other words, they're not taking a self-examination. Well, I eat it because I like it. Listen, I'm only using this as an example. Because lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, and the pride of life is the same thing. Because it's a, it's a false self-fulfillment. Well, I know, how many times have you eaten something? Well, I know it's not good for me. Now, don't get me wrong. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, there are things that we're going to eat that we can overcome, you know. But if there's individuals that eat things that are constantly not good for them, or they're not promoting good health. And they wonder why things happen to them. Again, if you eat all kinds of Twinkies, you're going to become a Twinkie. Amen? Hallelujah. So some of the things that must be broke is bad habits. Why? Because I'm going to tell you that bad habits can prevent you from receiving this anointing. Second Kings chapter 2, verse 1.
Now it all came to pass when, a, when the Lord was about to take up Elijah, and we've talked about this before, into heaven by the whirlwind, that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. Again, this is the process that God brings us through. He is going to test us in every area and challenge us in every area. In fact, God encourages, the enemy discourages. Amen? So the enemy will use anyone. And Elijah said to Elisha, stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me unto Bethel. But Elijah said, as the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. In other words, this is a place of pursuit and seek. One of the things God loves to play is hide and seek. He hides to cause you to seek. Lord, where, you, where are you, Lord? Come and follow me. Come and look for me. The Bible tells us that we should be groping for him. See, when we worship, this is what you're doing. You worship to seek him. I mean, there's a wonderful presence here today. As we worship, you can sense the presence of God coming in. Why? You draw his presence. Your worship draws his presence. Your heart of worship, you're telling him, I love you. I am grateful. I am thankful. It is the highest level of gratefulness that you can tell him. It is the greatest way to show him you love him. Because what happens then, there's an exchange of your presence for his presence, and a special anointing will come to get you through so you can become obedient and not rebellious. Now the sons of the prophets who were at Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that your master, <laughs> Lord, will take away your master from you today? And he said to him, What? Shut up. Hello? Basically. What, was he rejecting the voice of the strangers? Yes. But so many people don't. They got distracted or so easily swayed. Oh, really? How is that going to happen? When do you think it will happen? And who do you think will do it? And, blah, 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 blah. and there he goes. And then I went, hey, where'd Elijah go? The enemy does distractions. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> then Elijah said to stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. He never sent, he sent He's sending us. He said, I'm sending me. He sent me, the anointing one. I'm the one. Why? Because you're to be chasing the anointing and be servants to the anointing. Amen? Hallelujah. And, and, uh, but he, uh, Elisha said, as the Lord lives and as your soul lives, that's pretty deep, <laughs> I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. I will not leave you. I will not leave you. I will not give up. I will grab hold of you. No matter what, I will seek you. I will follow you. And of course, the sons of the prophets who were at Jericho came out and said to Elijah, Hey, man, you know that your master is going to be taken up today. And he said, Shut up. Other people might go, Oh, really? I just heard this from the other place, too. Oh, you know what? He stayed away from associations that would cause him to stumble. Even though they were the sons of the prophets, for him it was bad company. Come on, do you hear it? It was what? Bad company. Even though they were the sons of the prophets, because it, was, it would interfere with his call, purpose, and destiny. Then Elijah said, hey, man. I got to go to Jericho. He says, stay here. <laughs> he says, no way. No way. As the Lord lives, I am not going to let go. I am going to follow you. I will not leave you. So the two of them went on, and 50 men of the sons of the prophets 
went and stood facing them at a distance while the two of them stood off by the Jordan. Now, Elijah took his mantle, rolled it up, and they struck, he struck the water, and it was divided in this way and that way. And the two of them crossed over and on dry land. And so it was when they had crossed over, everyone say crossed over, that Elijah said to Elisha, ask what I may do for you. It wasn't until they what? Cross over. He fulfilled his appointed assignment. He reached the level of denial of self. And he reached the level of the Father's will priority. And he said, I'd like to have a double portion of your spirit upon me. He said, man, you've asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if you see me, if your eyes are still focused on me, when I am taken up from you, it shall be done for you. But if not, it shall not be. So he made it all the way. And if, but if he didn't see the whirlwind come and take Elijah, it wouldn't have happened. He had to stay focused. Then it happened as he was continued on and talked that suddenly a chariot of fire appeared with the horses of fire and separated the two of them. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elisha saw it and he cried out, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and its horsemen. So he saw him no more, and he took hold of his own clothes, which is the sign of repentance, and he tore them into two pieces. Oh, hallelujah. So he also took up the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him, and he went back and stood by the bank of the Jordan. Then he took the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him, and he struck the water and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he had also struck the water, it was divided this way and that way. And Elijah, Elijah crossed over. Oh, my gosh. Crossovers. It's in the anointing. You can't cross over without the anointing, man. You just can't cross over. You can't get into that place God has prepared for you. It's called the meeting room and the meeting. You cannot do it without the anointing. You can't do it. You can't do it in the flesh. You could will it all your life and still not cross over because you must go through the process that God has required. And he's appointed assignments that God has required for you. He qualifies us for everything. What does the Bible say? When you complete this assignment, you get the what? Promise. The promise. The promise is released after you've fulfilled the assignment. So many people are still recycling in the same assignment because they haven't completed they haven't learned to take dominion over themselves, over their mouth, over their eyes, over their ears. They're still about their business and not the Father's business. They're still compromised, one foot in, one foot out. They're not fully surrendered, and they're not really seekers of God's presence. They're bound by the letter. A new anointed, the latter rain and the second mantle will cross us over into the new area, era of righteousness and justice. We will be called ambassadors. People will know who you are. You won't even have to say it. We'll be ambassadors. We are of his kingdom and servants to the anointing. We'll be messengers of his mysteries of the eternal realm. We are to seek, grope, cry out for more of him. Again, I, he loves to play hide and seek. This is, <laughs> this is hide and seek, not trick or treat. Amen. People do not know that participating in events that are offensive to God will lose that anointing. Isaiah 42, verse 8 and 9. I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory will not give to another nor my praise to carved images. Behold, the former things have come to what? Pass. Do you understand that this is what's happening right now? That's what God is doing right now. 
and new things I declare. So all of the former things have come to pass and they're going to begin to disintegrate. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. That's through his prophets. That's through the anointed that tells us things to come. Does everybody understand that? New things I will tell you. I'm telling you right now that there's a new anointing coming, a fresh new anointing. It's a combination of the latter rain and the second mantle. And it is coming. It will trinkle, 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 then also whoosh. And it will trinkle, 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 then whoosh. See, we draw the anointing for whatever occasion it's needed for us. But it's available to us as a greater, greater way. And Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which were, are above, where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your thoughts, your mind, on the things above, not on the things of the earth. In other words, make sure you stay focused. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Therefore put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil, desire, covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of what? Disobedience. In which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. But now you, you yourselves are to put off these anger, wrath, malice, bl blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with its deeds. And have put on the new man who is renewed in the knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew nor circumcised, uncircumcised, Scythian, barbarian, slave, free. But Christ is all and in all. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on what? Tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, you also must do. But above, above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. In other words, set thoughts correctly, renewing your mind on a daily basis through the Word of God. First Peter chapter 5. Therefore, what? Humble. Humble. Being humble is the number one thing. God looks for somebody that maintains humility and humbleness. Uh, uh, again, how can I say this? He sees himself small compared to all the things of God, but big in the anointing. So, you, it, in other words, it's a place of humbleness. You know that you can't do nothing without him. You, your life depends on him. Everything you, you are so dependent on him in everything. And you tell him. You tell him. You tell him you love him. You tell him you're dependent on him. That you want more of him. You need more of his presence. You're asking him to help you die to yourself daily. He loves to hear those things. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. You look for conviction, as we've talked about many times. You don't wait for it. You look for it. Casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Don't work it out yourself. Hello? Go to him first. As I always say, go to the throne and not the phone. And then he'll tell you who to, who to call or what to do if you'll just wait. Resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. We must maintain a humble and submissive heart. Remember, he searches those who worship in truth and spirit. Psalm 51, verse 10. Created me a what? Clean heart, O God. This is a cry. This is a cry to God. This is David's cry after he blew it. 
create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence. This is when David fornicated. Do not take your Holy Spirit from me. That should be our cry. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. And uphold me by your generous spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways. And sinners shall be converted to you. <laughs> cry for more. We must be little in our own eyes. Amen. God requires honesty. Honesty. You know, I, I, and this is my only, my, my personal belief, that there, there must be first honesty with yourself. Because if you can't be honest with yourself, you're not going to be honest with God. In other words, honesty must be here. No covering, no justification, no reasoning, honesty. We expose ourselves to ourselves every single day. Would God want to put some his anointing on someone that won't expose themselves? No. That's why he removed the tree of life on the garden. He wouldn't let them live forever in that condition. They live quite a long time, though. <laughs> First Timothy chapter six, verse eleven. But you, O man and woman of God, flee these things and pursue righteousness, godliness, and faith, love, patience, gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold of eternal life to which you all also were called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. I urge you in the sight of God who gives life to all things and before Christ Jesus who witnessed the good confession before Pontius Pilate that you keep this commandment without spot. Blameless until our Lord Jesus Christ appearing, which he will manifest in his own time. He who is the blessed and only potent, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone has immortality, dwelling in an unapproachable light, whom no man has seen or can see, to whom be honor and everlasting power. Woo. Fight the good fight of faith, maintaining a level of faith that pleases God. I believe that we are entered a time of plenty before the time of famine right now. Look at what it says. Verse 17. Command those who are rich in this present age not to be haughty, nor to trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy. Let them do good that they may be rich in good works, ready to give and willing to share and help, storing up for themselves a good foundation for the time to come. That's what's happening. We are going to watch more and more things begin in the store. People are storing up right now. People are storing up gold and silver and uh, things, tangible things and all kinds of stuff. They're storing up food. They're storing up all kinds of stuff. Because there may be a, a, a time when things are in the transition, especially in the transition, will probably the internet and everything will go down for around 10 days. Stores will become empty. Look at places that are empty. I forgot where we went. Where did we go where it was empty? I don't know, but we were, we were somewhere. We went in the store looking for, I mean, I, bet, look, I went into Lowe's. I couldn't even get a garbage disposal. Yeah, we were at the, near the airport. And we went into this place. And, man, I was like, whoa, where is everything? It's gone. They couldn't get it. They can't, even the automobile industry, there's a lot of orders for that new Corvette that they can't take the orders until 2023 because they can't even get the parts to do anything with them. All kinds of new cars. So everything, they're, they're, they're right now, even um, uh, like Walmart and stuff, they've been, they've been, uh, Walmart's tough, but you know what? They've been holding back, too. There's been people that have been um, watching in other states, like in the de Democratic states. They're holding back. 
there's a guy that was taking film. He says, look at all of those, all of these containers and stuff of food they won't even bring in the store. Because, see, they're a part of, you know, holding their things back. Oh, hallelujah. Storing up for themselves good foundation for the time to come that they may lay hold on eternal life. Oh, hallelujah. Fight a good fight of faith. Maintain a level of faith that pleases God. Because, again, we are entering the time of plenty. That's why it's so important of associations, who you hang with. Who you hang with. Luke 16, verse 9. And I say to you, make friends for yourselves by unrighteousness, mammon, that when you fall, they may receive you into an everlasting home. <laughs> now that's, now, you know, people don't, most people don't get this. Why? Because, first of all, the servant was corrupt. And so he was trying to make amends to things. <laughs> and so here... He's saying, okay, well, look at the make yourself, make yourself friends with people of the wealth that are wicked that they can take you in. The problem is, is he don't, they don't they didn't realize many move from, um, from buying, from um, money, <laughs> buying, involved in money, amen. They're, they're moved more by money than they are by the Holy Spirit. And they end up in the devil's house. Does everybody get it? They're moved by what? Money more than they are the Holy Spirit. And they end up in the devil's house. 1 Corinthians 15. I also believe in this period of time and transition. It's a Job moment. To challenges and so forth, just like Job. And but Job came out with a double portion. Amen. And I believe that this mantle is also a double portion. The second mantle. First Corinthians fifteen thirty three. Oh hallelujah. Do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits. All those habits again. Awake to righteousness and do not sin. For some do not have the knowledge of God. I speak this to their shame. But someone will say, how are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? Foolish one, what you sow is not made unless it it's not made alive unless it what? Oh, snap. That's what's happening right now. It's going to be, God is causing a higher level of death to self so that everything can be made new. Made new. Everyone say new things. They were in it. Evil associations, rebellious, associating with individuals that are ungrateful, backbiting, We'll corrupt good habits. Amen? Now, how can I say this? The anointing breaks these things. First of all, it exposes these things so an individual can repent from that for them. And then cooperation with the anointing will break these things. Whatever it is. Do you ever notice that when somebody... Um, they quit smoking cigarettes, but they're still doing this. They grab a pencil or a pen, and <laughs> they're still, I mean, they stick their hands out the window while they're driving, <laughs> knocking off the ashes when there's no, it's a, it's a, you know, it's a pen or whatever. Because that habit of doing something has been incorporated in the, in the muscle and in the mind. And until that is broke and reset, you know, people have broken things in their body and so forth, and they had to have them reset because it would grow uh, the wrong way. Well, God is resetting us in every area, and he's preparing us so we don't miss what's getting ready to be released. 1 Corinthians 5, 
verse 9. Paul writes, I wrote to you in my epistle not to keep company with sexual immoral people. And I, yet I certainly did not mean with sexual immoral people of this world or with covetousness or extortioners or idolaters, since then you would need to go out of the world. But now I have written to you not to keep company with anyone named a brother who is sexually immoral or covetous or an idolater, or a reviler, or a drunkard, or an extortioner, not even to eat with it, such a person, or a rebellious one. For what have I to do with judging those who are outside? Do you not judge those who are inside? But those who are outside, God judges. So those who are outside of the body, God judges. Those who are inside of the body, we judge. In other words, judge them by their fruit. Amen. Well, you should know a person by their fruit. So whether you're going to hang with them or not hang with them. For those who are outside, God judges. Therefore, put away from yourselves the evil person. Remember, God calls rebellion evil. It's not to be compromised. Evil is rebellion. And, and, and they, will, they, will, they will not have access to the new things of God's anointing. 2 Thessalonians 3, 6. But we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you withdraw from every brother who walks disorderly and not according to the tradition what he's received from us. For you yourselves know how you ought to follow us. For we were not disorderly among you, nor did we eat anyone's bread free of charge, but worked with all labor and toil night and day, and that we might be a, not, not be a burden to any of you. Not because we did not have authority, but we made ourselves an example of how you should follow us. For even when we were with you, we commanded you this, if anyone will not work, neither shall he eat. No worky, no eaty. For we hear that there are some who walk among you in disorderly manner, not working or volunteering at all, but are nothing but busybodies. Now those who are such we command and exhort through our Lord Jesus Christ that they work in quietness and eat their own bread. But as for you, brethren, do not grow weary in doing good. And if anyone does not obey our word in this epistle, note that person and do not keep company with them, that he may be ashamed. Yet do not count him as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace always in every way. Amen. Praise God. No association. You know, you don't want to associate with into, into, or things. There's even associations with movies and so forth that can co bring corruption to you. Music can bring corruption. That's association with things. Amen? Um, things that we agree with. They can change the, the alter the course that we're going on. And when God begins to see that, he will hold back. Isaiah 65, verse 17. The Lord says, Behold, I created new heavens and a new earth. And the former shall not be remembered or come to mind. But be glad and rejoice for forever in what I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem as a rejoicing and her people a joy. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and enjoy my people. The voice of weeping shall be no more, no longer, nor shall it be heard, nor the voice of crying. No more shall an infant from there live but a few days nor an old man who has fulfilled his, way, his days. For the children shall die 100 years old, but the sinner, being 100 years old, shall be accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree, so shall be my, the days of my people. That's a long time. 
and my elect shall long, for long shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth children for trouble. Hallelujah. For they shall be the descendants of the blessed of the Lord and their offspring with them. Create a new season, a new time in the earth. Things are going to change. I, re I really believe that in this transition, many of our children are going to turn. Turn right to the Lord. Because they've seen the example of their families, their, fa their parents, many of them who were out there. You know, there was a meeting, there's actually a meeting today. Um, and it's all of these famous doctors. And people can go out there and they're about 400 bucks for a ticket. But I know, we know somebody that was invited to it. And they're, they're friends of one of them. And, uh, in fact, we had dinner with them last night. But the meeting of these doctors even is so that they're coming together to put a cure. They're trying to rescue these people. That are and, of course, the medical field is trying to disbar them, you know, from being doctors. But I found it quite wild. These doctors have gotten together and they're getting together so they can put something together to help people. Again, why? Because we are entering a new season, a new era. You know, all of this chaos has brought many people together, too. Although it's caused a lot of division. And there's been an accident in the body of Christ, but people are still coming into the body of Christ. And God's love is going to be seen through his body. And that's one of the great things of the anointing that's going to really bring much more love besides boldness. See, people think that boldness isn't love. Well, it is. Jesus was very bold. <laughs> he didn't take no garbage from anyone. And he didn't say what he always wanted to say. Hello? There was a lot of things he could have said and tried to prove himself, but he didn't. He proved himself on the cross, and then he approved us. Amen? One more scripture. Isaiah 10, verse 27. And it shall come to pass in that day that his burden will be taken away from your shoulders and his yoke from your neck. And the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing oil. The anointing oil. Amen? That's that greater anointing to come. The anointing oil. It's a point of contact to destroy the yokes of bad habits, sicknesses, desires, intents, bondages. That's where we repent before entering the presence of God so that we can be refreshed. So whatever it is, whatever it is that you want to be broke off, that you want to be severed from, let the Lord know. And when you are anointed with the oil, accept it, receive it, believe it. Amen that you are starting everything brand new. Everything brand new. It is the point of contact for the anointing oil. Amen? Amen.